How's it going guys, it's Billy here, and in today's video, I'm bringing you my, I guess it would be second video where I actually build a computer, but this one is actually a $550 PC that does indeed include Windows. So for all you cheapos out there, or just anybody who wants to really get into PC gaming and doesn't really want to spend more than around $550 and wants to play 1080p, this build might be for you. So today's video, I'm just gonna be doing a quick time lapse of the actual build itself, and I'm gonna be doing benchmarks and other things for it in another video, so be sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe if you want to check that one out. So let's do a quick rundown of what the components are and just a quick reminder, I'm going to be leaving all of the components down in the description below. So if you guys want to check it out for your very selves, all the links will be down there. Now at the time of this video, like I said, it's around $550. Prices can always go up and prices can always go down. So be sure to check it out in the description below for the most up-to-date pricing for those items. I'm also going to be talking about some of the justifications for the parts themselves, especially at this price point. Now this price point is a very controversial topic only because because you can either be going with something like the old AM3 socket for an AMD processor instead of what I'm choosing for this build, and that's the i3-6100. Now you might be asking yourselves, well, why did I go with that one and let's say not something from the AMD platform instead if I want to be saving money? Well, personally, Zen hasn't come out yet. That's the next AMD platform that's coming out. Right now, they still only have AM3 processors, and while some of them are really, really good and they're cheap, I decided to go with something a little bit more, and I hate the real, and I really hate this term, to be honest, future-proofing new stuff is always coming out. You're never going to be able to future proof your system entirely. But to be honest, LG 1151 is a lot newer than the old standard from AMD. And with Zen coming out, perhaps we can do something with that in the future, but it's yet to still be released. So in the meantime, I'm going to be going with the i3-6100 for this 1080p gaming build. Now, of course, if you guys have any problems or questions about any of the components that I use for this build, be sure to leave it down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear your reactions. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm right. It does doesn't matter. I just want to know what you guys think because in all honesty, I want to just aggregate and just get a sense of all of it from you guys, the community. My CPU choice also has to kind of do with the RAM. So you guys are going to see in a moment why I did choose to go with an LGA 115 instead of something from AMD instead. Next up, we got to talk about the motherboard because that CPU has got to go on it. And for this one, I chose the Gigabyte GA H110M-A. Now it's a micro ATX board, meaning it's going to have a smaller form factor than an ATX motherboard. And in all honesty, this is at least for the price point I found. I haven't used it yet but I'm gonna be telling you guys, at least for the build, how I find it. It at least hit all the things that I wanted to do with it for this price point. And next up is the RAM. And so this is why I decided to go with Intel instead of AMD. All of AMD's old chips still use DDR3 RAM. This one does indeed use DDR4 RAM instead. And the run I chose to go with was the Kingston HyperX two sticks of four gigabytes clocking in at 2133 megahertz. Let me just add to that, it's the Fury Black, just to be sure you guys know, because these names always have a bunch of different extra things to them. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why I decided to go with the Intel platform instead, is because of DDR4. Like I said, hate the term future-proofing, but DDR4 is indeed the future. DDR3 RAM is gonna be going out the window pretty soon, especially probably with Zen too, they're gonna probably be moving over to DDR4 RAM as well. So this kind of future-proofs it a little bit, I guess you can say it in that way, instead of having to go and look back, let's say you wanna add more RAM in the future, you don't have to look through old DDR3 stock, DDR4 will still probably be the newest at that time. And I guess that's the biggest takeaway from this build. It's a great starting point for what you want to do for 1080p gaming, but if you want to go further into 1440p or even 4K gaming, you can upgrade off of this platform, especially because it is LGA1151. You can go to an i5 or an i7 and even update the graphics card. You can bump up the RAM. There's a lot of options to upgrade from this platform. Next up, let's talk about the video card. Now this one, guys, I'm gonna probably get a lot of hate for this and you know, I'm sorry. Not all of the components in this computer are absolutely brand new and that's how I kept it under that $550 price point. And as I previously mentioned, it is gonna be a 1080p gaming machine, meaning it's not gonna be doing 1440p or 4K. We're talking about 1080p, guys. Now for this build, I was able to snag for $75 an XFX R9 280. Now unfortunately, this isn't the 280X, which would I was hoping to try to snag that for 75 or maybe $100. But with three gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM, this is gonna be more than enough for 1080p gaming, at least in the short term. Because this rig is gonna be mostly playing free to play games that are really, really popular. We're talking like Dota 2 and CSGO. I think this video card is more than sufficient to be able to fill that need. It'll also be playing modern games at moderate resolutions and frame rates as well, and that's what I'm mostly looking at. You're not gonna be playing these games on ultra high at 4K. No, it's gonna probably be medium to high at 1080p, and that's what we're looking at at this price point. But as I previously mentioned, this is a great platform to upgrade off of. So let's say you get a couple hundred bucks in the future, sell off this video card for whatever you can get for it, and then put in something brand new. 
But unfortunately at that point, you might have to upgrade the PSU, but we'll get to that in a little bit. For storage, I did have a one terabyte hard drive laying around already. So I've added that into the PC part list. So that's around $45 or so to include your own one terabyte. Unfortunately, we can't go SSD at this price point. You can, but it'll be really, really low in terms of storage capacity. You're probably only gonna be getting a 128 or maybe a 256 at the most. So up to you guys, that depends on where your kind of comfortability lies in that. If you want the speed and you can get a cheap SSD, go for that, but you're gonna be sacrificing storage space. I just went with the flat, one terabyte for 45 bucks. Now this is where it's probably gonna get a little bit dicey. I decided to go with the Corsair CX 450 watt bronze certified modular or at least semi-modular power supply. Now in total, according to PC Part Picker and a couple different calculators that I use, this thing is probably not gonna be using more than like 320 watts. So I thought getting that extra 130 watts or so of overhead in case you do wanna overclock the video card, for example, even though the video card said that it requires a 500 watt minimum power supply, it doesn't seem to be that this is gonna be the case where I'm gonna need you know, something like 500 watts. And this is where I was able to kind of save a little bit of money. The only issue is gonna be coming up in the future if let's say I wanted to upgrade to something bigger in terms of a video card that's a little bit more power hungry or even a CPU or even adding just more components in general, this power supply may or may not handle it. That's the only iffy part with this that you're gonna be saving money, yes, on this part. And it's a from a reputable manufacturer like Corsair and it is bronze certified but that 450 watt might run into some issues in the future. But at least for this particular build, everything should fit well under that limit. As I mentioned, it should only draw about 320 watts. So I still have about like, you know, I said 120 to 130 watt overhead, which should hopefully be more than enough, at least for this build. Now this part is the most objective for anybody out there. I wanted to choose something with a little bit of style, especially because you're gonna be building your own PC. You gotta have your own little touch to it. And for that, I decided to go with the Corsair Carbide M2 spec or rather spec M2, sorry, yeah, that's what it's called. Anywho, this is a mid tower case that fits a MATX or a micro ATX motherboard. And that's exactly what we have with that gigabyte motherboard. It should fit all of our components nicely in there. It does have a slot in case you wanna put an optical drive, but this particular build's not gonna have one because guys, it's 2016. If you have an optical drive, you're not installing Windows via USB, you're doing something wrong. It's got a nice little open window on the side, which I think is pretty cool, like a nice little open clear. So not open, like the case is open, but it's got a nice little clear panel so you can see your internals. The only unfortunate part is looks like it only has one fan in there. So I'm gonna be adding an extra fan that I had on my side. But if you wanna add a couple extra bucks just to throw in one for an exhaust, that's what I would be doing for this particular build. And guys, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this build does include Windows 10. Unfortunately, it's not the Pro Edition, but Home Edition will be more than enough for your needs, especially 64-bit edition. And that's where that $85 price point comes in. I didn't wanna say, hey guys, this is a $550 computer you gotta still buy Windows. The only thing I'm not including are a keyboard and mouse and a monitor. I'm kind of trying to keep it in that same realm thinking about a console. Cause in a console, you don't buy the TV, like you don't get a TV with it. You only get the console and a controller. Mouse and keyboard, you should hopefully have one laying around until you can upgrade that later. And if you don't, maybe drop another 30 bucks on this. I'm still trying to keep this build under like $600 in total. And that's where I wanted to keep that price point at the most. And I wanted to include Windows in it because that's a big thing I notice a lot of people don't include. So yeah, that's kind of my justification for all of the parts. Like I said, the only part that's a little bit iffy is getting the used video card. And as I mentioned, I snagged this one for 75 bucks. I was really lucky. And if you can get something like maybe a GTX 760 or something within the Nvidia line, if you prefer, the AMDs are a little bit more power hungry when it comes to video cards. So maybe if you want to stick with an Nvidia instead, like I said, a GTX 760. If you can get one for around 75 bucks or so, you'll be doing 1080p gaming just great. And there you have it folks for $550 and you wanna play games like Dota 2, CSGO, this is what the computer I'm gonna suggest at least for now to build. And I'll be leaving some benchmarks in another video guys, so be sure to stay tuned for that one. So let's get right into this one and build it up.
And there you folks have it with our $550 gaming build, including Windows in that, right? That's right, guys. A lot of people don't have that included in the price. I've included it, so you know it's $550 all in, pre-tax, but including Windows. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if you would swap out any of these parts for some current components. I just love to see what you guys think about it instead. That would either make it cheaper and better. That would hopefully be the main reason for that. I'm gonna be doing the benchmarking for this PC in another video. So if you aren't subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that video to see how the $550 gaming PC performs. As previously mentioned, it's gonna be a 1080p gaming machine. So let's see how it does in some of the most popular games. So so if you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more PC builds, be sure to press that thumbs up button so I know that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you didn't like it, be sure to hit that thumbs down button instead and let me know why you didn't like it in the comment section below. Either way though, this is really exciting for me. I wanted to always try something like this on this channel and I feel like right now it's the perfect opportunity. So thank you guys very much for watching today's video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.